fake news or information disorder represent an exception to the uh, underestimation of the uh, AI revolution in the media and creative industries. If you, if you think about it, all the occasions when the impact of AI on the media has burst into the public sphere concern fake news and produce real consequences. For instance, um, in May 2023, a fake picture of a Pentagon and the quarters bombing went viral causing the Dow Jones Index to lose 85 points, real consequences to fake news. You know what I mean? More recently, the faces and voices of famous actors were reproduced and used without them knowing to support Russia's propaganda against Ukraine. So on social media networks, these fake interviews with Brad Pitt and other actors uh, making very, very negative statements against uh, Zelensky um, received thousands of views before it was known that these were synthetic videos, that is, videos created by AI. Mm. Clearly, similar events provoke extreme concern. But we should remember that every technological innovation has been accompanied by a source of um, squinting effect, which leads to amplifying the distorted uses to the detriment of the more abundant beneficial applications. Um, in other terms, Demonizing AI for fear of its side effects would be as if in the past we had refused to switch from the plow to the tractor for fear that the tractor could pollute or run over people and animals. Going back to fake news, AI is not only used to produce fake news, and misleading content, but also in fact-checking and in identifying deepfakes. Therefore, it is used also in fighting this information itself. For instance, in view of the uh, elections that um, are to be held in many countries in 2024, very popular video sharing platforms have started to use AI to recognize and label as deepfake all the videos created by AI and uploaded by users. In my view, it is only by taking into account opportunities and risks at the same time that we will be able to develop a balanced regulation and to avoid emergency and um, radical responses in the wake of moral panics produced by misuses of AI such those I, I mentioned. And final point, if I may, um, from this point of view, as a media scholar, I can't help but notice that um, as far as Europe is concerned, the uh, AI Act does not include the media sector among the high-risk sector. Now, I do believe that the uh, AI Act is a very effective initiative but I cannot agree with the exclusion of media, provided their delicate role, their crucial role in society. Unlike other industries, the media produce symbolic or meaning-making goods, that is, goods which are likely to shape our perception of the world 
and to guide our choices. So I think they should have been included in the high-risk sector.